Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab, and another repair video. Let's get started. Ever wonder what's inside of a Keurig coffee maker? Well, me too, and today we'll get to find out together because this one has failed. I have a few of these machines, and they all work great. They all work fantastic. They make a great cup of coffee. This one here, however, was a little bit odd since the day I got it. Now, you might be asking yourself, what do you mean by odd? Either it makes a cup of coffee or it doesn't, right? Well, this thing here is an RF fire hose. And when I say an RF fire hose, I mean this thing makes a lot of noise on the shortwave uh, amateur radio bands and AM broadcast band to the point to where uh, strong signals are even affected by this. Weak signals are you know, completely gone using an external antenna even far, far away from this. So the story goes like this. I get this thing and uh, of course, you know, I'm not working on a radio receiver right at the time when I purchased this thing, right? So, uh, you know, the next time was probably a few weeks after this was purchased. I'm, you know, turn on a radio receiver and all of a sudden there's this, this noise in there. I'm thinking, where is this horrible noise coming from? I figured it might be coming from an adjacent facility or something like that. So, you know, I kind of put up with it. And I'm thinking, okay, this is just, this is out of hand. I got to find out what's going on. So I went around the place here, and uh, this one is right at the other end of this place. And when I mean the other end, this is a long ways away from here. So what I did is I have this little radio right here, which works great as a little sniffer. Uh, very, very sensitive little uh, AM radio here. And I can go around looking for this. I went to the breaker panel, and how I did is I went down the breaker panel with this until I came to a breaker that was noisier than the other, located where that breaker was attached to here, and then went from the breaker to the outlets that were attached to it and found this thing. Now, how do you find that this thing is actually making the noise? Well, just unplug it and it completely disappears. This thing is lit up with noise wherever you go. So I figure what this thing is doing is it's using the wiring in the wall of the facility here as an antenna. And it did make things a little bit, you know, tough to locate in the beginning. But again, just unplugging it, you know, you found your problem. Now, how do I know that it's actually using the wiring to radiate? Well, if I plug this into an isolation transformer with some RF decoupling, I can plug that into the wall. And around this thing, you'll still hear the noise, but once you get away from it, it's quiet. If I remove this from the RF decoupling isolated supply and plug this right into the wall, this place is lit up. Now I'm going to give you an example of that right now, okay? So that's problem number one. All right. Okay, so turn this on. Put this right here. All right? And here it's pretty quiet in here right now, right? So I'll plug this in. That's loud. So that's what I mean by RF fire hose. And it's everywhere, all over the HF bands and everywhere. So there's a lot of harmonic content coming out of this thing. Now, when I found it was this, of course, you know, at the time I'm just thinking, okay, no problems, I'll just unplug this. The other coffee makers, the other Keurig uh, coffee makers I have don't do this at all, all right? And they're the same, same, the exact same model as this, everything. So I can go right up to this thing real close and it makes just a touch of noise, you know, standard switch mode stuff, right? You're gonna hear just a bit of switch mode noise. So this one here is a little out of hand. So what I would do is I just unplug it. All right, so I'd walk across the place for a long ways, unplug the thing, and uh, no problems. All right, I, I have my uh, my sensitive hearing back with my, my antenna, and I can listen to weak signals on the uh, shortwave bands. Uh, if this thing is plugged in, it's just swamped. It's all over the place. So not a problem. For the longest time I did that, I just unplugged this thing. Not worry about it, right, because the last thing I want to do is worry about this coffee maker. So just recently, now it's not pumping coffee out anywhere, pumping the water through it at any rate. You can hear the pump turning slowly inside, but there's hardly any water coming out of this. So what I'll do is I'll just plug this back in. I preheated it earlier. So uh, just plug that back in. This is off right now. So I'll just take this cup. I'll put this in here. I'm going to turn this on. So normally you put a K-cup in here, or you can make your own coffee and put it in that fixed K-cup, whichever you like. You close the door. It uh, gives you this to select, so you can choose the cup. So I'll choose this one here. Here it's going to try and heat the water right now. So if I choose this cup, you know, it would fill it up to about here, right? If I choose this one, it would fill it much higher. Uh, the tray on the bottom, if you choose the wrong size cup, has got holes in it, and it'll absorb the 
the you know the the rest of the water that you if you choose the wrong size cup so it's kind of nice they thought of a lot of things on this so what i'll do is i'll put this here all right and i'll select this cup here now i might have to tip the microphone forward so you can hear the pump because it is pretty quiet so i'll turn this on yeah it's on okay so i'll just pardon the noise of me rocking the mic here and i'll just put this right here that's the pump that's turning extremely slow compared to the other ones. It should be pouring water right now, right? Nothing. So it'll go through its cycle. And then that's the end of the cycle. So I'll just tip the mic back up here. Pardon the, again, pardon the bumping noises as I'm moving the microphone around here. And uh, that's what I've got out of this thing. So as you can see, nothing came out, right? So it's heated the water up and, and just the pump is turning so slow it's not even doing anything. So the next thing to do is to remove the water tank. The water tank comes off the side with the water in it, actually. It has a little valve in the bottom that stops it from coming out. So I'll remove this, get this out of the way, and uh, I'll address the screws on the bottom. There are a lot of screws on here and there's overlapping plastic parts. So some panels have to come off before others and things are clipped together, it looks like. I haven't had this apart yet, so I'm going to be fumbling with this thing. So uh, I'll get all that over with and then once I have this thing completely apart, I'll explain how I took this apart. Either that or you're going to be watching me fumble with this and try and you know, pry plastic you know, pieces off of this thing to get this thing apart, right? So I'll save you from all of that. All right, it looks like there's a bunch of ways to get this apart, but what I did is I removed this from the top here first, and then that allowed me to maneuver the sides, which is this thing right here, allowed me to maneuver the sides around. A lot of things clip in this and then lock down in. So uh, for example here, this thing here, clips in. I don't know if you can see this on camera. I got the coffee maker in the way here. But anyways, you can see these little clips. See, they ha see how they have this little area that comes up? So this is designed to slide up on this. So basically this thing here, I'll just slide this in on here. Slides, slides in like so. And the little lock. So this has to slide down and come out. So it really is quite the uh, quite the scenario. So you got to take out all the screws on the bottom, and I pop the top off, and then that comes off, and then the sides come off. It really, it's uh, I was here fiddling with this because there's so much plastic, you don't want to crack it. I was fiddling with it for about ten minutes trying to get this thing apart, just as safe as I could. So that seemed to be the way that uh, got in the safest, and I didn't really break anything. So we're inside right here, and uh, this is what we're up against here. So I'll just zoom on into this board. So there's a whole bunch of things in here. Looks like we have our little hot water heater right there in the middle. This little thing right here, canister. There's a pump there and a little pump down here. And there's a sensor on this pump. That's these wires right here. I run off to the side of the pump, it looks like, over that little board right there. So this would be the, the two wires that... Uh, let's see if I can get this all in the frame here. It's kind of an odd thing to have moving around on the bench. These are the power wires and then we have a little board on the side here, a little sensor. And this one here, I don't know if this one has it. This one here doesn't. It seems to just be a pump motor. That's it. And uh, yeah, it just looks relatively simple. Control board here with a bunch of relays on it and a little switch mode power supply here. The Keurig is plugged in and it's switched on. I have some water here and I have a cup in the front. So what I'm going to do here is open the door on the top, close it, which will allow me now to select a cup size. So I'll select the cup size that is supposed to, you know, fill that. Uh, the, the good Keurigs fill this cup on that appropriate cup size to about this level, which is okay because it leaves some room for cream and sugar, whatever you're gonna add to the coffee, right? So, so what I'll do is I will select that cup and turn this on. And he's gonna hear the pump is hardly moving. 
Let's see what it's doing. Oh, it's actually pouring just a touch of water this time. So let's see what we get out of it. I think a lot of it depends, like, with this thing, is if it's been off for a long period of time or if it's just recently been on. Because the first time you hit the cup, it seems to pump just a little bit of it out. And then the second time, it pumps a whole lot more because I guess it kind of primes the pump the first time. So it's kind of interesting. So there's just a little bit of water down at the bottom, as you can see there, which is nowhere near. It's, you know, right down about here, right? It should be up about here. So... It is kind of sporadic like that. So the first time we tried it, I believe it gave us almost no coffee. Again, because it probably wasn't on. So again, once you prime it once, it kind of seemed to give just a little bit more the second time. So what's happening is this pump here down on the bottom is the one that's doing the pumping. And then you can hear some kind of almost like a, a I don't know what it would be. It's called the frother. It's even on the side here. It's written frother. I've looked at that there. So, or frothing, or frother, I can't see it from here. Frother, yeah, so it's the frother. So it's this one right here is the frother, and that's the side pump here. So that's the one that makes that kind of uh, blowing noise here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this around so maybe we can see the side here. Maybe we can watch what's going on in the pipes. So let's see if we can. I'm not sure if the lighting is going to affect this. It may. I don't know if we're going to be able to see any water through this here. So, anyways, we'll try anyways. So, I'll put this back in here because, you know, it's not going to give us a whole lot more water. So, I'll open the door on the front, close the door, and select the cup again. And, I don't know if you can hear that. That's this pump going. That's this making noise. Still not pouring any water. There it is. That's coming out just a little bit. just trickling out of there. So you can hear that, the element came back on to heat some of the water. Yeah, it shut off. Now here's the frothing pump here. Now this, you can see kind of, I don't know if you see a bit of movement in there. And that's this motor right here doing that. So that's supposed to give us the, the frothy effect on the top. So, two of them, and I'm still not even up to the level where, you know, the coffee should technically be. So, yeah, a little bit weird. So, the pump is turning very, very slowly. So, they have to be controlling the speed of the pump with these wires right here, so... You know what? Why don't we... Let's see what happens if we move, remove the speed controller. Because that's obviously what's going to uh, control the speed, right? Is this thing. So it's either going to turn right off or it'll turn right on, depending on how they have this configured. What I'm going to do is empty out that cup because it's kind of full. You know what? Let's just cheat a little bit. Let's pour it back in there. Okay. So put this back in here. Cup's back in the front again. And uh, hopefully we can hear what's going on here. So what I'll do is I will remove the uh, just remove the speed control. Let's see what happens. Just for the fun of it. So open the door, close the door, select the cup size. Wow! Hear that? It's motoring along, but it just shut down. So and it actually shut the whole coffee maker off. So the power off button. Our on button here and off button is is not lit anymore so now it's back on again so let's just try this one more time what i'll do is i will select the appropriate sized cup of coffee and it the motor goes to full speed but it just ends up shutting down and nothing has come out it's still you know dry for me dumping it out so it seems like the lack of a, a speed signal here. So what this is doing is obviously counting rotation, right? There's probably a hall sensor or something in there, I would imagine. Let's plug that back in if I can, down in here. And try it one more time and see if it see if that does anything. Wouldn't that be something if it was a bad connection? So I'm going to turn it on. 
Wait for the relays to click. Open the door, shut the door. And I hit that again, so... It's heating the water. And the pump is still running at the same speed. Okay, I have the scope across the motor here. So what I'll do is I'll open the door again. And let's see what happens. So I'll press the cup size. And there's the PWM. So obviously what's happening is when I remove the speed controller, it's sensing... Let's unplug this here. See that? And it basically senses that it's going to its max and then shutting down. So basically there are no pulses when I disconnect the the uh, little, con not the controller, but the um, the sensor here that runs off to the controller. So there is no control over it, and it senses that uh, it's lost pulsing. So the pulses from the little sensor down here are missing, and then, as you can see, the pulse width gets wide as it speeds up. That's exactly how a pulse width modulated motor controller works. So you get that positive duty cycle. It, as, it, as the top portion of the signal gets wide, the motor speeds up and uh, allows you to control very large motors with a relatively large FET. All right, let's test the power supply in here. So I'll put this on to meter. And there are two capacitors here. So we have these capacitors here, which are filtering the power supply. And then we have some smaller capacitors here, which are trying to get rid of some of the noise on that supply. So these will most likely be in parallel with these capacitors here. So let's just check this out. So i to be very careful. I'm doing this off to the side here. I don't want to short anything out. I'll put this on here first, the one I can see much better. Of course, my hand is going to block this. So let's see how I can do this without blocking the screen. Got to be super careful that uh, I don't go about shorting anything. There is 12.2 volts, and I have the leads backwards. So where the black lead is, it would be positive on the other side. So there's 12.2 volts there, and this is a 16 volt capacitor. It says right here, 16 volts at 560 microfarad. So that is going to be right because you want a bit of headroom for the actual supply. So because the cap is only rated to 16 volts, so we definitely wouldn't want to exceed that. 12 is pretty close. So let's try this other bypass down here. I'm going to steady my hand. I don't want to short anything here. And there we go. Yeah, it is 12.2. So again, right across both of the caps. So we know that the supply is working and the coffee maker is on right now. So yeah, so the supply is working. Let's see uh, if we have any ripple there. This will tell us if the caps are working. So just go here and I'm going to go up here and go enter. So now we have AC volts. So let's see what we have for AC volts across these uh, again. Let's be super careful here. No AC there at all. 0, 0.00. Of course, the red leads right in the way, but so 0, 0.00. And uh, let's try this other one. Very hard to do this on camera and be steady at the same time. 0, 0.00. So these caps are okay. There's no ripple there at all. So we know the voltage is okay, and we know that there is no ripple. So now the question is, is as I mentioned before, this thing was inherently noisy. And I uh, just so you know, my fingers are a long ways away from these leads here. These are, this is the AC input. It looks like I'm right on top of them, but I'm actually this far away from them. It just, there's a lot of depth here, right? You can't really tell the depth. So at any rate, uh, just in case you think I'm getting my fingers close to these leads, I'm not I'm a long ways away. At any rate, so the what's happening here is we know so far that uh, this has made a lot of noise. So it's been unplugged many, many times. So the coffee's made and then the thing gets unplugged because when I'm uh, you know, working on a radio or designing some noise sensitive circuit or something like that, I don't need this thing from, you know, halfway across, well, I'd say almost completely across the facility in order, uh, making a lot of noise, you know, and, and, and of course that's going to stop me from, you know, doing what I need to do on whatever I'm working on. So I have to unplug this thing. So it's been unplugged a whole lot of times. And so we know that this has happened already. We know that so far the motor speed controller is working. 
And we can actually test the motor speed controller here in just a moment and make sure that it, it is working you know, properly, but I, I would imagine it is because the thing's plugged in and we have you know 60% duty cycle and 40% on. So we know that that's already working. So what's very odd is when you unplug the speed, the sensor, when we unplug the speed sensor on the bottom, the motor ramps up to full speed completely. So there's no problems with that. So we know that the, vi the device that's doing the PWMing is working okay. And we also know that the sensor is working because it's sensing speed. We know that the power supply in here is okay. We know that the thing at this point is still going to be creating noise. But the only thing that I can think of right now that would be causing this problem is either the, the voltage to the motor is low or something like that, like to the because the PWM is there. So we'll check the, the motor voltage here. And either that's low or that little IC right there has maybe lost some of its programming from being unplugged and plugged in so many times. Maybe something in it is corrupted. So if this is corrupted, uh, you know, we're not going to be able to get this thing to, you know, we'd have to somehow rewrite this thing, right? And who knows what they've done, right? Right. What do we have down here? Keurig Dr. Pepper, it says here. Do you, do you think they would release any information to me about that? Highly unlikely. So we would have to somehow work, work our way around that and uh, make this thing produce coffee again without relying on, you know, the, what maybe the parameters that was programmed into this IC. So let's see, what can we do? Let's see how many volts is across this motor. So this is going to be pulsing, right? So this is going to be pulse DC. So let's see, is there anything in the cup? No, there isn't. So what I'm going to do is change this back to DC. Pardon all my movement here. I'll go down here, enter. Okay, so we're back to DC. And I'll open the door and turn it on. There it is. Let's see what we got. This is going to be backwards, but it doesn't matter. So minus 7 volts. I'll have about 12 volt supply. And the reason it's doing that is because it's also, there's AC or a pulsing component in there as well. So uh, let's see, measure. Let's go here and go enter okay so let's see what it reads as ac well what a surprise right five volts right because it's pulsing so now it's off now let's see what this the frother is if i can get this in here one volt so that's not doesn't look like that's really pwming does it so let's try that again so i would imagine that we'd probably have close to 12 volts across the frother motor right because there is no speed controller there right so let's do uh i'm not here i'm reading this from the side trying to adjust this so and there's glare on the screen so pardon my fumbling here trying to show you what's going on and not struggle through this whole thing okay here we go turn it back on okay so we're on dc again so the frother is not going to be on i wonder if i can do this somehow without obstructing the So I'll just put this here. So we'll wait for the frother. And I'll just move this back over to this screen here. There we go. So 12 volts, right? It's moving around a little bit, right? Probably is picking up the noise from the motor. So that's the reason that you see that this is running around, right? Because you've got, it's a brushed motor. And of course, this is creating noise on this. And that's the reason you saw the meter moving around. But yeah, it's, it just looks like there's 12 volts across, right? We saw 12 volts there. So as the motor speed came up, as it was, you know, on, you would see that come up to 12. And then, of course, the the noise was causing digit, the digits to move there a little bit. So what is this telling us? So it's telling us that this is working. Let's see what the actual uh, voltage is to this. So now, let's see if I can, I'll grab a piece of paper here and I'll illustrate how most uh, PWM circuits work. Give me a sec, I just gotta walk over here to the other side, pull out a piece of paper out of my printer. And uh, just grab something to write on. Okay, so 
So most likely what's going on here, and it looks like it would be something like that, is so we have our, our DC motor here. So we have a DC motor, right? We have our this in, right? And we have a brush here and a brush here, right? So this here is most likely going to be running to positive 12 volts, right? This is very common. And then we have our FET. And so we have this and this and this and it's running off to ground. And then this is our PWM signal here. So from the, from the processor is what's turning this thing on and off. So this is a very common circuit for PWM. So this would be the red lead, right? Be positive. Let's see if I'm correct. And then, of course, pardon my scribbles because I'm trying to do this here. And this would be the black lead. All right. So if I was to measure this, we should have 12 volts here. And then, of course, this would run to a FET or a transistor. I don't know what this is. I would imagine they're probably using a FET on this, right? Because there's very little circuitry between this and the processor. Transistors mean more circuitry because they're current controlled devices, whereas FETs are voltage controlled devices, so they very easily couple to processors and uh, are very easy for uh, easy to control that way. So let's see here again. So if I measure this again and uh, I can show you this here, I can find out which side is negative again. I think it was the other side that was negative, right? Yes, so this other side here is negative. So this is negative, so I should have, if this is going to be uh, PWM, this would most likely be going right to 12 volts, right? Again, this would be going right to the 12 volt supply, so let's see if that is correct. So I'll put this here, and I'll go over to this side here. i got to steady my hands. This is really hard to do around the camera. So the last thing I want to do is, there it is. You see? So this is a standard circuit. So there's uh, nothing too incredibly creative here. So what's happening is, is this is exactly what's going on. So we have the 12 volts running into the red lead of the motor, right? This is going to the speed controlled motor. And then this one here is going to be coming, you know, basically back into a FET down in here. Either this one or this one or whatever they've got doing. And then, of course, this is going to run with one of these small traces up over to this processor. And there really is nothing in between that, right? So uh, since this is negative here, what I'll do is I'll shut this off. And let's go to ohms. Uh, this is going to be drained off. All the lights went off. So those, these little caps here will be, be drained. So let's go to ohms here. Okay. And one of these leads here should be negative on the, on the actual uh, speed, speed sensor. So we'll go over to here. Hopefully you can see this. Boy, that uh, scope could really use being on the other side, eh? See if I can uh, do this without blocking the screen. That okay? That is okay. Okay, so I'll just touch this side of the cap again because we know that's negative. And that's not it. So let's see this next one here. Yeah, that's negative. That's grounded right there. So that's the ground lead for the speed sensor. Right, right here. And then um, so this is here. 21K and 1K. So, you know, there is a chance that that actual speed sensor in inside this pump here has an issue. That, uh, But, you know, the, as I say, the PWM looked pretty good. So maybe it could be just a little weak. There is four leads, so maybe there is two sensors inside this motor. I really don't know what's going on. So... Yeah, there, there is a strong position for coffee here. So maybe there's uh, once they use one for, for speed for the strong position and one for the uh, just regular coffee. I, I really don't know. But um, at any rate, uh, if the speed sensor in this in the motor on the bottom here, which I'll show you again, if the speed sensor in here is gone, that's part of this housing up front. And getting that, uh, getting that apart would require just completely disassembling this pump and taking that sensor out. And, you know, of course, we're going to risk, uh, risk leaks and all sorts of things at that point. And, um, you know, if we do pull the pump apart, you know, there's a really good chance that, um, that uh, you know, finding the components for that little speed sensor, the parts are probably not even marked. So, again, you know, where are we at at this point? So... Let's try something here. So we know that this is ground, and we know that removing the speed sensor, removing the actual speed sensor uh, causes the thing to speed up because pulses are missing. So 
let's uh, let's try something out here. Let's get creative. Okay. So we know the power supply is working. Put the wire back in there. It's a couple of goes. A couple of uh, pump outs there. Okay. So we know that the speed sensor is working. We know the power supply is working. The speed sensor is working somewhat. We know the frother is working. All the voltages are there. This is really uh, you know pointing. You know, it's at this point, it's really pointing at this thing. You know, I, I honestly think that it, maybe it has lost some some programming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a resistor here off to the side. Let's see what is this. 2.7K. That may not be enough. Give me a second. I'm just going to grab another resistor here from my bin on the other side. As you can see, this is totally on the fly. So I'll just grab a bunch. Actually, these are sitting on my bench. On the other side here, I'll just see what I got. And uh, just bring some of these over or something that'll work because uh, we're going to be shorting things in the uh, sensing leads here. So, what do we got here? Uh, that's 1.5k ohms right there. So, I'll just move the focus back over here. So, uh, that is uh, 1.5k ohms. There's this one here. It's 2.2. I think something uh, like 680, that'll work. That should be low enough. That's not going to damage anything, so let's uh, let's try something out here. So we know that that center pin, or that one up from the bottom, was ground. So let's try this out. Let's see if my suspicions are correct. So I'll just try bridging this to a bunch of pins here. I'll go to the second one up, or the third one up on the uh, sensing leads. So I will plug this back in. Turn this back on. It is on. Uh, hit the cup size. And uh, wait for this to turn back on again. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this resistor to the top pin and see what happens. And then we'll go down to the second one down here and see what happens. See if we can increase the motor speed. Because bringing one of these things close to ground is obviously going to probably do that, right? Okay, here we go. Nope. Second one. There it is. So that increased it when I put uh, that right across these two pins right here. So the, the two, this one right here and this one right here. That one there and that one there. Increased the speed, but of course it's missing pulses now. So what it's doing is it's shutting off because it, it sees that there's an issue. So I'll, I'll do that again. Absolutely no water came out on that run at all. So turn that back on. Close this. I'll get this ready. Again. Okay, so let's try this out. Here we go. So it's the same speed. And uh, if I bring this to the next one up. Do that. So it's not shutting off if I pulse it. So if I pulse this and basically bring that bring that signal to ground and pulse it so it doesn't think that there's actually pulses missing it stays running and as you can hear this the motor speed ramps way up goes right up to full speed and um, actually on that run got a fair amount of water out of that so that is a pretty good sign so it's one of two things and both of these things create an issue so one of them is going to be that speed sensor in the motor ha does have an issue and i i really can't see that because it is governing the speed and we're getting you know 60 40 right out of this thing and uh the only other thing it is is the leads you know you know basically they come right off of here and go right into the processor you can almost see them right from here great right in the processor so i'm really beginning to think honestly that this thing has has been corrupted just from being unplugged and plugged in so many times right it was working 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 and then ju it just didn't so very very good possibility that um that some parameters are missing inside this thing 
So what else can we test here? Let's take a look at the actual signal on here and see what that relates to. So in order to do that, let's uh, see, get some more ideas of what's going on and how we can solve this problem. Because this coffee maker, if it has dead parts or a bad IC, will not defeat me. So we'll figure this out. If that processor it has missing parameters, we'll work around the missing parameters and make this coffee maker work again. It's on Mr. Carlson's lab bench right here, right? Nothing leaves this bench without working. All right, so what are we gonna do? So let's uh, put this onto the ground. So I'm gonna switch this back to scope. Uh, I don't know where the signal is gonna be up here, so I'll just put it onto auto and hopefully it'll catch it. And uh, so this would be obviously where the PWM signal is coming in, those two pins, right? Because when we short those pins, we get full speed. So I am going to actually, I'll move this out of here for a sec. I'm just going to dump this warm water back into here. Because that cup had quite a bit of water in it. Put that back there. Open the door, get everything ready. And I'll select the cup size here in a second, and then it'll immediately start pumping. So I'm just using the lead on this resistor for a ground. That's all I'm doing. And I'll poke the other lead into the other pin here, like so. And uh, move the focus over here. OK. Here we go. Let's see what happens. So that's what's coming out of the actual it's taking 6040 and turning, you know, the, or it's taking this signal out of the pump, the signal coming from the speed sensor, 27 and 72, and turning it into 6040 on the bottom side. So you can definitely see there's some work going on inside that processor to do this. So if I hit, let's hit strong, that should slow it up. Yeah, it's, the pump is like turning almost nothing at all and it just shut off so the pump was almost turning nothing so positive width on the sensor side uh makes things slower but positive width on the motor side makes things faster and that's just obvious it has to have positive width on the motor in order to make it go quick right so what is this telling us so that's telling us it looks like it's sensing signals correctly Again, I'll open this up and we'll do that again. Let's turn this on. Right, and if I short that, we're going to probably just lose this signal. Yep. And take that off. Yeah, and you see it moving around. So it's, it's adjusting the speed. You see that? So the processor is working. It's doing its job. And what? I'm betting that parameters are missing here. So something's missing. That little IC got corrupted somehow. All right, well, that pretty much just... Yeah. That tells us right there. So there's something wrong with this little fella right here. So it has been corrupted. Everything is working. Everything seems to be there. So we know that pulsing this thing negative ups the motor speed. So do you think we can trick that processor? All right, let's see if we can trick this little IC over here, a little processor, into thinking that everything is just fine. So I have an optocoupler right here attached to my function generator. The signal you see on the scope screen right here is from the function generator, and it's being basically picked off these two leads right over here. So if I move this into the, into the uh, shot here, you'll see that. Okay, so my scope lead is just right across that, just trying to steady everything. Now, the output of the optocoupler or optoisolator is running right into the sensor input leads on the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some pulses. The frequency of this is about 5 hertz, okay? And what I'm going to do is vary the pulse width. I'm going to, on my function generator, that's called the symmetry control. And let's see if I can ramp the speed of the motor up and down by changing that. Okay, so you'll see this move here. My function generator is way up at the top here, so I'm going to have to move that control. And uh, you can watch this and you'll see things happen and listen to the motor speed. Okay, so here we go. I'll uh, get it ready to produce a coffee. Okay, 
or pump water in this case. So here we go. So that's the speed there. That's me moving it around. So there you go. As long as it sees pulses, it stays running. And by me adding pulses at 5 hertz and changing the pulse width, I can trick that processor into operating correctly so I can get my correct cup of coffee back. So I'm going to fool with that uh, pulse width for just a little bit. And uh, when I get the perfect cup size, I'll be back. I think I figured out the perfect width for the perfect cup size. So let's open this again. And here we go. Let's see what happens. Wait, what a difference in motor speed, right? Listen to that thing, it's just moving along. Look at that. Almost perfect. I could probably bring that down just a touch. So it's, oh, centimeter wise, maybe a centimeter and a bit from the top, right? You see the, the level there? About a centimeter from the top. So I'll just dump this back in here again. Okay, and uh, I'll just bump that down just a little bit. Maybe I can just tweak that up just a touch. So let's bring this to, say, uh, other way is down. So let's try that. All right, just a touch. Okay, so here we go. Let's see if that works just a little bit better. So I want it just a little bit more empty, I guess you could say, because you know, if I'm going to add cream or anything like that to the coffee, uh, I want it to be a little lower. My other Keurigs is actually quite a bit lower than that, but hey, you know, since I'm going to be trying to basically cheat the processor and to think it's a cup, I can make my own cup sizes so I can really customize my coffee to my own cup. Okay, so this is very close to the other Keurig. Wait till that's done. That's very close. In fact, the other Keurig is down just a little bit more than that. So for this particular cup size in that cup setting. So that would be about perfect. So add a little bit of cream and, you know, it would bring you just, you know, a little bit below the, maybe below that line there. Add just a bit of cream and uh, you can walk around with a cup without spilling it, right? So that would be about right. So there it is. So the bottom line is I can trick the processor into making the perfect cup just by setting or piggybacking some pulses in here, adding some pulses, I guess you could say, uh, to what the actual motor is sending out. So I basically need to create a pulse adder circuit. So I'm going to have to design something. I'll design a pulse adder circuit. And I imagine I'm thinking a TL494 would work because, it's, you know, it's basically it's you know, PWM type circuit or IC. So I'll design something with a TL-494 and put something together that's adjustable so I can trim my cup size and uh, I'll be back. I've designed a pulse adder circuit for the coffee maker so the coffee maker works correctly again. So I've already made the circuit board and I've already populated the circuit board. I've done all of that right here at Mr. Carlson's lab and I'll share that with you here in just a moment. I'll show you the design and the circuit board and all that kind of stuff. And then I'll go about putting it in the coffee maker and then I can trim it up and make sure the coffee cup sizes are just perfect. We still have a problem though. 
one of the problems that still is in this coffee maker is it's an RF transmitter. This thing is noisy. So all the way from across the facility here, when I'm working on anything at the bench here, especially an AM receiver, uh, this thing is the best transmitter around. And I need this thing to stop transmitting noise so that I can, you know, effectively listen to radio stations, especially weak radio stations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some RF decoupling. And it's a very simple thing. So first of all, the, the first things in question are this capacitor right here. It's basically coupling this ground plane here the, on the on the low side of the of the switch mode to the high side here. So this is a capacitor, and this is usually just added here for noise reasons. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the value of that capacitor, and I'm also going to add some capacitors across the line cord to effectively short out the RF that the line cord is trying to transmit. So if I put RF decoupling across the line cord, effectively what it's doing is it's it's just shorting it out before it gets out of the line cord. Okay, and I'll show you that here right now. So don't try this at home. So I know what I'm doing here, and this is the reason I have gloves on right now, because I have to hold this capacitor and attach it into circuit. Okay, so what I'm going to do is turn on my little radio here. All right, so I'll turn on the coffee maker. You'll hear the tone change. Here we go. And I'll turn the coffee maker off. Okay, so it makes more noise when it's off. So I'm going to put that right on the bench, right beside the, the coffee maker right here. All right, I'll turn the volume up. So this is what I hear all the time from across a facility. It's just amazingly noisy. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the value of this. Now I have an XY rated safety capacitor here that I'm using for this. Watch what happens on the radio. Almost goes down to nothing, hear that? Now let's see what happens if I put one just from the AC line to the, uh, to the actual neutral or to the ground, or in this case, into the earth ground. So we can really see where it's coming from, right? So now, let's see what happens if I go from the other side of the line cord to ground. Alright, so I'll shut this off. So what is that telling us? All this thing needed was a little bit of RF decoupling. So maybe three capacitors, maybe an amendment to this value right here, and some RF decoupling across the line cord. So from the hot side to the ground, and then from the neutral side to the ground. And of course, they're XY rated safety capacitors of the appropriate value. And this thing would be RF silent almost. Right? It would keep the switch mode noise localized here. Whenever you're around a switch mode supply, if you bring a you know a radio right close to it, of course it's going to hear it. But you got to remember, this radio is right beside this. And I'm eliminating the noise. Like, you know, the radio is what, this far away? Just by adding those components. So, very, very simple fix to this thing. And I'll be able to service radio receivers and leave this coffee maker plugged in. And hopefully the... Uh, that little IC up there won't uh, maybe sustain any more damage. There we have it. So what I need to do is I need to remove this circuit board now. So unplug it and remove everything out of here. And I'm going to change those capacitor values. And I'm going to add those other capacitors to the back side of the circuit board here. So they'll be on the back side of the board because there's you know, lots of wires and stuff hanging out here. There's not really a, any good place to add it here. And uh, I'll show you that here in just a moment. The coffee maker is unplugged from the AC line and all the capacitors here are discharged safely. And now what I want to do is remove the board. So I need to remove all of these little connectors. And a lot of people get fooled by these things. So in the old days, these things used to just be, a, you know, a really good friction fit. So you could pull these things off and they just come off. But nowadays they've added this little spring loaded tab here. You see that little tab that I can push in and out? So that little tab locks into a hole down here. And if you don't press this tab, you can rip the lug right out of the circuit board. So what I'll do is I'll press this tab, just wiggle that, and as you can see, it just comes off nice and easy. And you can see that little hole right here that it locks into. And they're all like that. You know, you can sit here and you could pull on this like crazy and nothing will happen. 
but the moment that you press the little tab down, you know, they very easily come off just like that. Here's a closer look at the circuit board. They did a really nice job in stitching the planes together all over the place. There's lots of stitching here. And, uh, you know, a really nice job labeling everything on the board. You know, they've even labeled what things do. User interface, serial, debug. So there's, you know, it's at WP would be water pump, you know. And uh, you just look around here. It says frother down here. I don't know if you can see that. I'll, I'll zoom on into that in just a moment. Anyways, what I've done is I've already changed the capacitors. So I changed that capacitor out and I've added these two on the back side here. I've used that high heat fibrous silicon coated piping on the capacitors here and uh, or at least on this one here because of the long lead length. None of the capacitors actually touch the board. They stay away from the board. Same with this. It's not close to that other lead. And I just like to stand things off the board just in case something ever did go wrong that it's not pressed right against, you know, traces on the actual board. There's sharp points there. And if something fails in the component and it's right up against the board, a lot of the times it causes a lot of damage. So just a little bit of forethought there. Uh, the piping is over the leads just because, you know, there's long lead length here. And as you can see, they're going over the other leads. But you can see, the, you know, it's a long ways away, right? I want to make sure that um, everything is uh, just right. So I touched up a bunch of solder connections on here. Some of the solder connections that I figure should have been touched up. Now, there's a little pressure sensor here that I never mentioned that runs over to one of the lines that comes out of that little boiler in the uh, coffee maker there. It looks like a little boiler tank, but uh, the water heater in there. So anyways, I'll zoom on in. So you can see it says, you know, frother here. And, uh, you know, just, you know, they did a really nice job just labeling everything the level sensor. So on the side is a, uh, a little level sensor. I may have mentioned that. So... Yeah, they did a nice job putting it together. Now, I yeah, I debated replacing these capacitors, right, and putting brand new ones and maybe some Nishicons or something like that, United Chemicons or uh, something like that in here. But you know what? These are brand new. Like, this thing is has so little time on it, and they test just absolutely fine. So why not just leave them in? So that's where I'm at. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a positive and negative lead on the back side of this capacitor so I can run this up to the top to attach to my little circuit board I'm going to add. And I'm also going to tie a lead into the, the sensor lead right here. So it'll be this one right here, right? This one here was ground. So that one will be into the sensor and that way I can adjust the motor speed from the top side of the unit, which brings me to the circuit board that I've designed. So Back this out here. So this is what the circuit board looks like on a, a relatively large piece of paper. And this is what I do. And this is much like the circuits that I, I release on Patreon to everybody on Patreon. So they get a layout like this with all the components listed in here. And um, of course, then they get the actual sized layout, which is there, which is the transferable, uh, you know, little layout. And then with that, you can make the actual circuit board itself. So this is the circuit board right here. That's the little circuit board right there that's made. So when you look at the circuit board, this is negative, this is positive, and this is the signal that runs out right over to that sensor. And this is a little TL-494. I don't know if you can see that there. TL, that's upside down, but TL-494 right on there is a little IC, and this allows me to adjust the width and I should be able to get the perfect cup of coffee out of this. So I build these circuit boards right here, and uh, they take no time at all. So it's it's very quick, and you know I get a lot of people always saying to me, Paul, why don't you export your boards and just get them done, and it's a lot less hassle, and this, that, and the other. In the time it takes you to export your board and hit send, I probably have this made. Of course, not populated. Population takes, you know, to populate something like this probably took 20 minutes. So this is the little guy that's going to make that coffee maker perform like a champ. And that little circuit board is going to go... Let's back this out. Right up here. So I measured this all up before I did this. So that will sit perfectly right in here on some standoffs. So... I don't want this sitting right down in here just in case some water ever did, you know, you get some form of condensate and it runs down on here or something like that. I don't want the circuit board sitting right at that level. So I'm going to put two little plastic standoffs there. So this will stand up just a little bit 
and uh, that'll keep everything safe. I can run the wires down through this hole right here onto the back side of the board, and I'll leave a little piece of wire sticking up from the, uh, from the ground, which is this one right here, and a little piece of wire sticking up through the board for the signal out so I can clip my oscilloscope on there and adjust this just perfectly. And I will share that process with you here in just a moment. So I'll get the wires all connected and everything all put back together here. And uh, we'll see if we can make the perfect cup of coffee. The circuit board is installed on this tray here on the little standoffs, as you can see right there. And it's ready to try out and align. So there we have it there. A little circuit right there, and you can see the standoff, so if there's any moisture or anything. I could actually even spray this with a like a, a, a polyurethane or varathane and just seal it all up, but I, I really don't think there's going to be an issue because you know, this board right here is exposed. And, uh, you know, the pitch between the pins on that little processor is, you know, much finer than this, right? So I think this is going to be okay, just the way it is. So, the adjustment is right here. So what I need to do now is get some water and we'll hook the scope up to this. I left those little leads there, as you can see, a little bit longer. So you can see the length of this lead right here. I can clip a scope to these leads here. This is the ground and this is where the, uh, the PWM is. And uh, I can adjust this up for the perfect cup size. So I'll get this all set up and we'll try the thing out and see if it works. I have water in it. I have the cup in here and the little circuit is installed. And as we can see, it's creating a very nice signal, so what I'll do is I'll adjust this up. I don't know where that is. I think it was somewhat halfways. There it is. So, let's take a look at the PWM. Isn't that nice? You can turn that right up to DC. Look at that. Right at DC. And it goes right down. So this is bottoming out at about 9.5%. So not too bad. So we were around 60. So let's try that 60-40 and see what happens. It's a very touchy control. But we'll get it right in the ballpark. So there you go. So let's try that. So open this up. You can see the cup empty, put this in here, and let's see what happens. So now when I turn this on, this is going to get confusing looking because this is going to be mixing with the PWM signal that this already has. So there is no opto-isolator. This is directly tied into the circuit. This is a pull-down. So I'll go, and you can see that there. So that was almost like a prime. You could hear it. It was pumping for a second and there was almost nothing there. Which is kind of a good test because, you know, that thing will set off overnight or get refilled or something like that. So if it fills up relatively well like this, then it's a pretty good test because this is technically the first cup, right? Alright, so that I would say is just a little bit less than the actual other Keurigs that I have. It's very, very close. So I'll put this back in here. The water in there is cold, so we'll just mix with the cold water. It's not going to be a big deal. So what I'll do is I will change this and... So the closer I bring this to 50%, it's, uh, the more it's uh, going to make. So I'll bring it down to about 55. So roughly there for now. Let's try that. Here we go.
reason I have the scope up so high. It's sitting on a bunch of bins here is because there are water splatters on the bottom. Last thing I need is for this thing to see water. That is looking really good. So there you see that, the level of that. So I'd say that is, you know, very close, almost spot on to the other uh, Keurig. So what I'll do is I'll grab the one size up. So I don't have that cup here right now. So I'll go grab that one size up and uh, we'll give that a try. See how that works. Should fill that relatively full as well. Looks like the perfect amount to me, and if that's not enough, it's quiet. You can touch the radio and touch the coffee maker at the same time. So definitely, project successful. If you're enjoying my videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be many more videos like this coming in the near future. We'll be taking a look at vacuum tube and solid state electronic devices alike. So if you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time to do that as well. If you'd like to be notified as soon as I post a new video, don't forget to tap that bell symbol. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way, and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions and designs, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the Show More tab, and I'll also pin the link at the top of the comments section. So if you click on the link, it'll take you right there. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.